Mathematic Zoo by Simone Weil All created things refuse to be for me as ends. Such is God's extreme mercy towards me. And that very thing is what constitutes evil. Evil is the form which God's mercy takes in this world. This world is the closed door. It is a barrier. And at the same time it is the way through. Two prisoners whose cells adjoin communicate with each other by knocking on the wall. The wall is the thing which separates them but it is also their means of communication. It is the same with us and God. Every separation is a link. By putting all our desire for good into a thing we make that thing a condition of our existence. But we do not on that account make of it a good. Merely to exist is not enough for us. The essence of created things is to be intermediaries. They are intermediaries leading from one to the other and there is no end to this. They are intermediaries leading to God. We have to experience them as such. The bridges of the Greeks. We have inherited them but we do not know how to use them. We thought they were intended to have houses built upon them. We have erected skyscrapers on them to which we ceaselessly add stories. We no longer know that they are bridges, things made so that we may pass along them, and that by passing along them we go towards God. Only he who loves God with a supernatural love can look upon means simply as means power, and money, power's master key, is means at its purest. For that very reason, it is the supreme end for all those who have not understood. This world, the realm of necessity, errs us absolutely nothing except means. Our will is forever sent from one means to another like a billiard ball. All our desires are contradictory, like the desire for food. I want the person I love to love me. If, however, he is totally devoted to me, he does not exist any longer, and I cease to love him. And as long as he is not totally devoted to me he does not love me enough. Hunger and Repletion Desire is evil and illusory, yet without desire we should not seek for that which is truly absolute, truly boundless. We have to have experienced it. Misery of those beings from whom fatigue takes away that supplementary energy which is the source of desire. Misery also of those who are blinded by desire. We have to x our desire to the axis of the poles. What is it a sacrilege to destroy? Not that which is base, for that is of no importance. Not that which is high, for, even should we want to, we cannot touch that. The Metagzu The Metagzu form the region of good and evil. No human being should be deprived of his metagzu, that is to say of those relative and mixed blessings, home, country, traditions, culture, etc., which warm and nourish the soul and without which, short of sainthood, a human life is not possible. The true earthly blessings are metagzu. We can respect those of others only in so far as we regard those we ourselves possess as metagzu. This implies that we are already making our way towards the point where it is possible to do without them. For example, if we are to respect foreign countries, we must make of our own country, not an idol, but a stepping stone towards God. All the faculties being freely exercised without becoming mixed, 
starting from a single, unique principle. It is the microcosm, the imitation of the world. Christ according to Saint Thomas. The just man of the Republic. When Plato speaks of specialization he speaks of the specialization of man's faculties and not of the specialization of men, the same applies to hierarchy. The temporal having no meaning except by and for the spiritual, but not being mixed with the spiritual leading to it by nostalgia, by reaching beyond itself. It is the temporal seen as a bridge a metaxu. It is the Greek and Provencal vocation. Civilization of the Greeks. No adoration of force. The temporal was only a bridge. Among the states of the soul they did not seek intensity but purity.